let's talk about how to teach estimation and measurement. We're specifically going to be talking about third graders and I can't wait to get started. I'm Allison Dowda from A Double Dose of Dowda and not only are we going to talk about how to teach estimation and measurement in a hands-on and visual way to students, we are also going to quickly go through the progression of this standard, where it will take them in the future, what they need to know now, we will also talk about differentiation. So if students are struggling with these skills, what do we need to focus on to help intervene or enrich their learning? Let's get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is the progression of the standard. So in third grade, we are talking specifically about estimating and measuring. We're doing this with primarily grams and liters because that's what the standard focuses on. I will mention that length and reading rulers and line plots are a separate standard in third grade and I hope to make a video on those sometime in the future, but today we are going to focus on grams and liters. In fourth and fifth grades, students will begin converting measurements. In fourth grade, they will only convert measurements from larger units to smaller units. And then in fifth grade, they will be converting units larger to smaller and smaller to larger. Anything is fair game in fifth grade within the same system of measurement. So in third grade, we are talking primarily about estimation and measuring exact measurements. As we go through, I am going to take you through what's called the CRA model. It's the concrete, representational, and abstract approach to teaching math. We're going to start with concrete, which is hands-on. We're talking about manipulatives, things that students can touch. Then we'll talk about representational. They'll take the things that they learned from what was hands-on for them, and it's going to be drawn in pictures or other sorts of drawings. It will be very visual. And then lastly is abstract. And for abstract in this model, that's when we typically deal with equations and algorithms. So specifically for estimation and measurement, when we are talking about how to present this in a concrete way to students, we are going to focus on using liquid containers and also balances, scales, and weights. For representational, we will focus with pictures. And then for abstract, we're going to look specifically at word problems. I like to point out the milestones, the big parts of this standard that we want to break down and make sure that students can do each one of these things. The very first for third grade is I want to make sure that students can relate units to common items. I want them to know whenever I ask that a paper clip is approximately a gram, a heavy book is approximately a kilogram, a drop of water would be a milliliter, and then a large water bottle would be a liter. Second, they need to be able to read exact measurements. So that is in real life. I want them to have those experiences where they're measuring things, but then also on paper, they need to be able to read a measurement. Whenever a scale is drawn, they need to be able to read a measurement both at a line or things that fall between lines or unlabeled lines on a scale. That can be tricky. The third thing that they need to be able to do is they need to be able to approximate measurements. So they need to know if a measurement that's given would be reasonable or not reasonable. Um, for instance, if a swimming pool were filled with water, would it be more reasonable that it would have two liters of water or 300 liters of water? Then, they need to be able to solve multi-step word problems that have to do with measurement and estimation. As I've already mentioned, the focus of this standard is grams, kilograms, liters, and milliliters. The most foundational part of this standard is that students have a true understanding of how much each of these are. So I start by using this anchor chart, and you can just see part of it at a time, but it relates the mass of one gram to one paper clip and the mass of one kilogram to a heavy book and a thousand grams is one kilogram then it also includes that a few drops of water is about one milliliter and a large bottle of water is about one liter so once they have a sense of some common items that they can relate this to then I start giving them some questions to ask them about which unit would be most appropriate to use. So 
I'll do that as I'm instructing and then give some practice opportunities. Um, something like on this one, the mass of an elephant, would that be kilograms or grams? And then they just can go through and answer just these little things, mass of a TV, coffee in a mug, um, sugar in a recipe. So these amounts, they're building that familiarity. The more game-like I can make this, because it's not a difficult concept for them, but the more game-like I can make it, so I'll do like tic-tac-toes and things like that also. Again, this should not take them very long. Once students can answer those questions, then they begin doing a pretty good job of estimating measurements um, for the most appropriate measurement between a couple of choices. So the mass of a pen, would that be 90 kilograms or 90 grams? Um, mass of a microwave or um, you know, volume of a soda bottle. These sorts of things are questions then that they can give approximate measurements for. Those first two skills are picked up pretty easily. The next part of this standard is for students to read measurements. I've used a lot of hands-on materials for this. A few of my favorites are having different size containers for measuring liters and milliliters. I like to have a few scales like this. These are a little bit pricey, so I just have a few that students can share. And a half a class set of plastic balances and weights like these so that students can really better understand grams because that's one thing that they just don't have a lot of practice with here in the U.S. The most important thing that you will need to teach directly to students, the thing that they're going to struggle with the most, is how to read scales, balances, and beakers. So begin with reading exact labeled measurements where on the balance or on the beaker, it goes up to a labeled line. Then they should catch on to that very quickly. Then you go on to questions where it's not on the labeled line. Once you have introduced students to this, they really need time to explore these tools and these measurements on their own. I would give students charts to complete with classroom items written on them, and then they would have to go around the room and measure them. And I would leave spaces for students to come up with their own items from the classroom that they would choose to measure. In addition to measuring items, they also need practice using these tools to show a precise measurement that's given. So for instance, you need to give them opportunities to fill a beaker to 250 milliliters. As students get some practice with measuring real items, I do begin to then have them draw the weights or liquids that they are measuring on blank scales or beakers like these. So maybe I would have them measure, um, you know, 400 milliliters of water. So I would ask them on their paper then to draw what the 400 milliliters of water looked like because I need them to not only be able to read it, but to begin with this representational of drawing pictures. So they also need to be familiar with if it's between something. So let's say that I had 125 milliliters of water and that's what they were measuring. Same with the scale here. I would want them to be able to draw an item up here that they measured and then for them to be able to show me what what the measurement was something like that so i think that that's important to have them go from as they're doing the concrete and the measuring of things go ahead and start having them record on paper once they have a good understanding of this from the hands-on approach then we move to the representational approach. So this is where when they see a picture of something, they can read that the capacity of this container is 90 milliliters, or they can read on this scale that it is 610 grams. So this is representational is when we start pulling in pictures and they are no longer relying on the actual physical measuring of real life items in front of them. The last stage is abstract. It's a good idea to bridge the gap to abstract, to have students just start with one step 
word problems. And I like to, in those early stages, still include a picture. So they're still reinforcing that skill of having to read um, a scale. In this case, maybe there's a problem that they're asked and something that they have to do with it. And so they still have to read this scale and then they answer the question. Once they get more advanced, I tend to move more away from pictures and just ask word problems that involve multiple steps. But I also like to ask word problems that they have to pull information from tables like this one in particular. That is how I progress students from the introduction of grams and liters and kilograms and milliliters all the way up to multi-step word problems. Now, if students are having trouble, there are a couple of areas that are probably the main culprits for why they're struggling. So here are some ways we can intervene. One is we might need to intervene with the units of measurement and making sure that students understand what the units are. They need to be very familiar with them. The biggest one, in my opinion, is this, um, this struggle sometimes students have with reading and approximating scale labels. Again, they can typically read something when it comes up to a line that is labeled, that's not a problem. But when it falls between lines, that can be a difficulty. Then solving one-step word problems. They might need some assistance with breaking that down, pulling in the representational, pulling in the hands-on if needed, um, to help intervene for solving those one-step word problems. If you have students who are doing really well and they need a little bit of a challenge, then you can press them to read measurements that are fractions. So think about measuring cups especially. They have mixed numbers or fractions on them. So you can begin having students do that so that they are not always reading to a whole number. I have put together some of my favorite activities that I use with my students when it comes to metric estimation and measurement. So here's what we've got. We have a PowerPoint, some centers, lots of worksheets, games, an anchor chart, so that you can see these a little bit clearer. Here's what it looks like. So I have a PowerPoint that takes you through an entire lesson from start to finish about grams and kilograms. It has students do everything that we've already talked about. Um, it includes student notes along with the PowerPoint that they fill out as they go. It has an exit ticket and it includes a scoot game with different levels of questions. You can use them as task cards or a scoot game. Either is lots of fun. I personally um, put these cards around my classroom and students use it as a scoot game. So they go with the clipboard around the room and they're answering the questions. I have three different worksheets that you can use with students. The first one is asking students to give appropriate units for a given measurement. Would it be something that you would measure with grams, kilograms, liters, or milliliters? Next, I have an approximate measurements worksheet. So you have to decide based on a scenario, what would be the more approximate, the more appropriate approximate measure for that, whatever that is. And then lastly, the last worksheet is a little word problems worksheet. So they're just brief little word problems that students have to figure out. And these mazes, they always enjoy these. Um, and it's just a fun opportunity for students to practice their skills. Next, in this bundle, I have a grams and liters anchor chart. So this is something that you can print as a whole sheet or it's available also as half sheets. So you can print those if you use interactive notebooks with your students. I also have in there a large printable version that prints as a poster. So you can print a poster to have up on your wall for students to reference. In addition, I have four centers and games. So these activities, there's a tic-tac-toe, and on this one, students have to choose what would be the appropriate measurement on that. Um, the volume and mass matching cards and the volume and mass word problem task cards and volume and mass word problem matching cards, those are some that I referenced in the video and you could see some of those sample problems. So students are having to read the scales, read the balances. They are having to answer word problems using tables, all sorts of good stuff for that. 
And then lastly, I have two more games in that one. One is a whole class interactive game that kids love. I call them races in my classroom. And um, so students are competing with each other in these real, real world challenges. And then I also have a volume and mass bingo. So it's really excellent for having students read scales and read beakers to exact measurements. And it's one that they'll ask to play over and over again. So if you want to check out any of those resources individually, you can, or I do have the bundle linked in the description below um, for all 11 resources. Lastly, I have for you a printable handout, and it is something that I just like to have these printed and you can put them in a lesson plan book. And it reminds you of everything that we talked about today about the progression of the standards, what strategies you could use for the CRA model, what the milestones are, and how to differentiate your lesson for this. So I encourage you to check these things out and let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching, and we would love for you to subscribe to our channel.